Welcome to a lesson on the determinant of a matrix. For a square matrix, we define a useful quantity called the determinant. We define the determinant of a one by one matrix as the value of its only entry. For a two by two matrix, we define the determinant using the formula below. Well, if we're given the two by two matrix below, the determinant of the matrix is equal to A times D minus B times C. Before trying to define the determinant for larger matrices, let us note the meaning of the determinant. Consider an n by n matrix as a mapping of the n-dimensional Euclidean space Rn to itself, where vector x gets sent to matrix A times vector x. In particular, a two by two matrix A is a mapping of the plane to itself. The determinant of matrix A is the factor by which the area of objects change. If we take the unit square in the plane, then matrix A takes the square to a parallelogram of area equal to the absolute value of the determinant of matrix A. The sign of the determinant of matrix A denotes changing of orientation, negative if the axis gets flipped. Let's consider the matrix A below. Notice the determinant is equal to one times one minus one times negative one, which is equal to positive two. So because the area of the unit square is one, if we take matrix A and multiply it by matrix B, where matrix B contains the vertices of a unit square as columns, then the area should double because the absolute value of the determinant is equal to two. I've shown the multiplication here on the right. Because the number of columns in the first matrix equals the number of rows in the second matrix, we know the multiplication is defined and the product will be a two by four matrix shown here on the right, where each column represents a vertex of the parallelogram after the mapping. So let's take a look at this on the coordinate plane. On the coordinate plane, we have the unit square in blue. After the mapping, we have the red parallelogram, which is actually a square. Using some right triangle trigonometry, we can see the length of each side of the red square is equal to the square root of two. The square root of two times the square root of two is equal to two, and therefore the area of the red square is equal to two, which is double the area of the original square. Notice the absolute value of the determinant of A does give us the factor by which the area grows. And now let us look at the determinant for larger matrices. We define matrix A sub i j as the matrix A with the ith row and jth column deleted. To compute the determinant of a matrix, we pick one row, say the ith row, and compute the determinant using the formula shown below. The determinant of matrix A is equal to the sum from j equals one to n of negative one raised to the power of i plus j times the element A sub i j times the determinant of matrix A sub ij. If we expand the formula using the first row, we get the formula shown here. Notice the exponent on negative one actually indicates whether we add or subtract the product of the element A sub ij and the determinant of matrix A sub ij. If i plus j is even, we add. If i plus j is odd, we subtract. Applying the formula to a generic three by three matrix shown above, we get the determinant of matrix A is equal to the element A sub one one times the determinant of matrix A sub one one minus the element A sub one two times the determinant of matrix A sub one two plus the element A sub one three times the determinant of matrix A sub one three. Notice when I plus J is even, we add, and when I plus J is odd, we subtract. And now to apply the formula to find the determinant of the given three by three matrix shown below. And again, we'll go ahead and use the first row. So we start with the element A sub one one, which is equal to one. So we have one times the determinant of the matrix after we delete row one and column one, which gives us this two by two matrix with entries five, six, eight, nine. And now we go to the next element in row one, which is two. But because this element is in row one, column two, and one plus two is odd, we have minus, and then two times the determinant of the two by two matrix formed by deleting row one and column two, giving us entries four, six, seven, nine. And now we move on to the third element in row one. Because the element is in row one, column three, and one plus three is even, we have plus, and then three times the determinant of the matrix after deleting row one and column three. The two by two matrix has entries four, five, seven, eight. Next, we evaluate the determinants. For the first determinant, we have five times nine minus six times eight. For the second determinant, we have four times nine minus six times seven. 
And for the last determinant, we have four times eight minus five times seven. Simplifying, the determinant is equal to zero. The numbers negative one to the power of i plus j times the determinant of matrix a sub i j are called cofactors of the matrix. And this way of computing the determinant is called the cofactor expansion method. No matter which row we pick, we always get the same number. It is also possible to compute the determinant by expanding along columns, picking a column instead of a row. And it is true that the determinant of matrix A is equal to the determinant of the transpose of matrix A. A common notation for the determinant is a pair of vertical lines as shown here on the left. This can be confusing because it might get confused with absolute value. We know absolute value is always positive, but a determinant can be negative. And therefore, we'll stick to the notation shown here on the right. Thinking of determinants as scaling of a mapping, if B doubles the size of the geometric objects and A triples them, then A times B should make the size go up by a factor of two times three or six, which actually is true. From this, we can state the determinant of the product of A and B equals the determinant of A times the determinant of B. This property is one of the most useful, and it is employed often to actually compute determinants. Interestingly, this does have a consequence for the existence of inverses. Take A and B to be inverses of each other. Then we know A times B is equal to the identity matrix I, and therefore it follows the determinant of A times the determinant of B equals the determinant of the product of A and B, which equals the determinant of the identity matrix, which is equal to one. Neither the determinant of A nor the determinant of B can be zero. Because this is so important, let's state this as a theorem. An n by n matrix A is invertible if and only if the determinant of matrix A doesn't equal zero. If we look at the formula used for the inverse of a two by two matrix below, notice the denominator of A times D minus B times C is the determinant of the two by two matrix. And we know division by zero is undefined, which demonstrates if a square matrix has a determinant equal to zero, it doesn't have an inverse or it's not invertible. Or again, from the theorem, an n by n matrix is invertible meaning it has an inverse if and only if the determinant doesn't equal zero. I hope you found this helpful.